Um, so we're starting chapter five of the book of Daniel, which is a very famous chapter. And as we're going to see in the course of the, the time that we spend together today, it actually captures the imagination of many people, um, including some famous artists, as we're going to see. Um, and uh, there's an expression which comes from this, uh, uh, from this chapter, which is uh, still a very commonly used expression, uh, even in our contemporary society today. Um, so, so let's let's read the chapter. Then we'll we'll spend some time evaluating um, its place in in uh, in art and uh, maybe in popular culture and um, and and what it means. So here we go. It's the fifth chapter, um, and we're talking about um, a person named Bel Shatzar, who was the king. Um, now Bel Shatzar, I'm going to get skip to the uh, the story here. Um, it, the way that it's presented here is that he's the son of the Buchad Netzar. He's probably not the son of the Buchad Netzar actually, um, but he just for the sake of the, the way that the, the Tanakh presents it, that's what he's known as. Uh, he's known as the son of the Buchad Netzar, which means he's the king that takes over after the Buchad Netzar, who's been our primary king that we've focused on as we've uh, studied the book of Daniel. So King Belshazzar gives a great banquet for his thousand nobles. And in the presence of the thousand, he drank wine. Sounds a lot like Purim actually. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar ordered the gold and silver vessels that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple at Jerusalem to be brought so that the kings and his nobles, his consorts and his concubines could drink from them. Um, also sounds a little bit like the rabbinical midrash that is put into the book of Esther um, and uh, Ahasuerus and his feast and his banquet, where it says um, that, uh, that they drank Mikelim Shonim, they drank from various different um, utensils. So the, the, the classic rabbinical explanation is they drank from the utensils of the Beit HaMikdash, which you see here is not um, uh, a Midrash, it's actually the story. Um, the golden vessels that had been taken out of the sanctuary of the house of God in Jerusalem were then brought, and the king, his nobles, his consorts, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Just then, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace opposite the, the menorah, so that the king could see the hand as it wrote. The king's face darkened and his thoughts alarmed him. The joints of his loins were loosened and his knees knocked together. The king called loudly for the exorcists, Chaldeans and diviners to be brought. The king addressed the wise men of Babylon. Whoever can read this writing and tell me its meaning shall be clothed in purple and wear a golden chain on his neck and shall rule as one of three in the kingdom or third rank or something like that. So um, as this, that theme kind of appears again and again throughout the Tanakh, where a king has a certain vision, the, the king is startled by the vision, and uh, the king calls uh, to, to get a sense of what this vision means, he calls all his wise men. We've seen this happen in lots of other places, Paro and the Parasha uh, last week, and uh, uh, Ahasuerosh, and uh, we've seen it already with Nebuchadnezzar multiple times, and here again, um, his son, Belshazzar, has this, this image of a hand writing on the wall, um, which he sees through the light of the menorah, um, which is, okay, interesting. So as happens in these types of stories, then all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known its meaning to the king. They couldn't, they couldn't tell what it, what it said or what it meant. King Belshazzar grew exceedingly alarmed, but, and his face darkened, and his nobles were dismayed. Because of the state of the king and his nobles, the queen came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke up and said, O king, live forever. Let your thoughts not alarm you or your face darken. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In your father's time, and again, you see he's, he's just talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar, illumination, understanding, and wisdom like that of the gods were to be found in him. And your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, exorcists, Chaldeans, and diviners. It sounds like Daniel's in retirement at this point because the queen has to tell the, tell the, 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 you know, the king. And it sounds like this queen isn't the queen who is the wife of the king. It sounds like she's something along the lines of 
the queen mother because um, she wasn't at the party and she seems to be no, in possession of knowledge of days of old. Seeing that there is no, um, seeing that there is to be found in Daniel, whom the king called Belt Shatzar, extraordinary spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, to explain riddles and solve problems, let Daniel now be called to tell the meaning of the writing. Right. So, so Daniel, we had seen was able to interpret multiple visions, including his own. Um, perhaps Daniel is able to is going to be able to explain what you're seeing, Belshazzar. Daniel was then brought before the king. The king addressed Daniel, you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah. I have heard about you that you have the spirit of gods in you and that illumination, knowledge, and extraordinary wisdom are to be found in you. Now the wise men and exorcists have been brought before me to read this writing and to make known its meaning to me, but they could not tell me what it meant. I have heard about you, that you can give interpretations and solve problems. Now, if you can read the writing and make known its meaning to me, you shall be clothed in purple and wear a golden chain on your neck and rule as either third rank or one of three in the kingdom. But basically a very similar type of offer that is made to Yosef, and maybe a little bit as made to Daniel by his, quote, father, Nebuchadnezzar. So um, we have a dream, we have a, vi or a vision, I should say, because everyone saw it, it seems. Um, and the king is perturbed by it. And now Daniel, uh, the court Jew, the outsider, is there to, to try and make meaning of it. And make meaning he does. Then Daniel said in reply to the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your presents to others. But I will read the writing for the king and make its meaning known to him. O king, the most high God bestowed kingship, grandeur, glory, and majesty upon your father, Nebuchadnezzar. And because of the grandeur that he bestowed upon him, all the peoples and nations of every language trembled in fear of him. He put to death whom he wished and whom he wished he let live. He raised high whom he wished and whom he wished he brought low. But when he grew haughty and willfully presumptuous, he was deposed from his royal throne and his glory was removed from him. He was driven away from men and his mind made like that of a beast and his habitation was with wild donkeys. He was fed grass like cattle and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he came to know that the most high God is sovereign over the realm of man and set over it whom he desires. So basically what Daniel says is, listen, your dad, or maybe it was his grandfather, whoever it may be, but your dad, um, he was given the power by Hashem to do a particular purpose, and he did what he was supposed to do, but then he got haughty, and Hashem um, put him down, and he put him down by turning him into an animal, as we saw. But you, Belshazzar, did not humble yourself, although you knew all this. You saw what, went, what your father went through. You saw what Nebuchadnezzar experienced. You exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven and had the vessels of his Bet HaMikdash brought to you. You and your nobles, your consorts, and your concubines drank wine from them and praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see, hear, or understand. But the God who controls your life breath and every move you make, him you did not glorify. He therefore made the hand appear and caused the writing to be inscribed. This is the writing that is inscribed. And here's the Aramaic. Mene, mene, tekel uparsin. Mene, mene, tekel ufarsin. And this is its meaning. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Pedes, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medeans and the Persians. Then, and, and basically what Nebuchadnezzar said, but what Daniel told Belshazzar is, the writing on the wall says, your days are numbered, your kingdom will be taken away from you. Then at Belshazzar's command, they clothed Daniel in purple, placed a golden chain on his neck and proclaimed that he should rule as one of three in the kingdom. So even though Daniel said he didn't want it, um, Belshazzar accepted the, the version of the dream and the explanation that he gave and uh, re rewarded Daniel for what it's worth. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. And that's the end of the chapter. Um, so... Uh, it's it's a it's a very striking story, and um, 
very different than, very similar in some ways to the Paro story, but in some ways extremely different. Um, it, it seems like in lots of the other stories where the king gets a message, um, the Hashem seems to say, listen, I have a purpose for you. I have a use for you. And here, this king doesn't have that. This king is, um, we meet him as overstepping his bounds. Um, he, as soon as he comes onto the scene as the king, what's he doing? He's forgetting the lessons that his father learned and he's disgracing Hashem. He's, he sees no value in Hashem. He, he, he takes the utensils from the Bet HaMikdash uh, and he shows them off. Um, and as a result of doing that, Hashem says, time's up. Uh, you are not going to be the, the, the one who uh, um, is my person. You're not going to have the power. It's time for a different group of, of, of kings. And uh, the reign of Babylon will be short-lived. And it was. And, and, and we know, actually, right around that time, that is when the Persians take over. Of course, we know uh, biblically uh, the story of uh, Mordechai and Esther takes place not long after this. Um, and, and that leads to a return uh, of some part of the Jews to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the Beit HaMikdash. And all that is, is significant. But here, Hashem is basically telling Belshazzar, or showing Belshazzar, the writing is on the wall. Um, your, your days are numbered. Um, what I wanted to do for uh, just a couple of minutes is show you um, this. Um, let's see. Come on. Um, show you just a couple of these um, very famous pieces of art that have been, um, you know, they're out there portraying um, what happened. And again, you, you see that this, um, you know, kind of captivated the, um, the, the imagination of many, including many famous artists. So here we have one, um, let's move this, let's see. Uh, let me hide this, yeah, there we go. Um, here we have one very famous painting. And um, what do you see? Um, well, it's, it's a very big step back picture. One of the ways that, that's interesting about it um, as we're going to see in comparison to some of the others. You know what? Let me just show all the others that I'm going to show, and then we can, we can uh, see what we can make of it. But to take this image in for a moment, if you can, if you can look at your screen um, and see what you see. Um, and you see, notice um, the depth, the color, the, 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 the range, um, things of that nature. OK, so that's picture one. And the next picture I'm going to show you is very different. Um, it's a Rembrandt. Um, and again, here, notice some of the same types of things. Um, the angle, the depth, the coloring, um, other things of that nature. Um, all you know, interesting. This is a famous one. Um, here, you, you, you get a sense of the faces. Um, this one is actually an image. Let's see if I could uh, move this somehow. Um, this one is an image which um, is actually a wood relief. It's a wood carving somewhere. Um, and um, again, similar type of uh, picture, but not exactly. Um, and finally, um, another one. Um, I don't, this one is from, uh, I don't remember where it is. It's, a, it's in a museum in Scotland, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but again, uh, another image uh, capturing Daniel interpreting the dream to Belshazzar the king. Okay, so um, those four images, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at each one, but um, you know, I wanted to make a point of um, looking at, hold on one second, I just want to move this. Um, so what do you see here? Um, a couple different things. Um, so first of all, in the background, you see uh, the towers of Babylon and uh, Migdal Bavel um, is very famous for that. And this is probably uh, an image that, that makes its way in the background, gives it certain setting. You'll notice in this picture, um, what the things that this artist picked up on, including uh, the, the scale of the party, the thousand people, um, and, the, and the placement of the king above them. Uh, you see the Abu Dazara in the picture, uh, the snakes, the statues. Uh, you see the menorah, which we mentioned um, was there. Um, 
the writing on the wall is interesting. Um, it's really far away and you don't see, at least as far as I could tell, you don't see a key feature that was in the, in the, in the story, which is the hand writing on the wall. You just don't see it. Um, and and it's, it's a little different than the way the Tanakh described it, where the writing has its kind of own glow. I don't know that that's um, off of the light from the menorah. It doesn't seem like that would be able to do that from there. Um, but that's there. One of the other things that you see um, is Daniel is clothed um, in darkness. Um, he's wearing very dark colors, uh, probably to say that he's got a dark message. Um, and probably this is the old, this is the older queen. Maybe this is the older queen um, that called him in to speak to Belshazzar and tell him um, what the meaning of it is. So it, it, it's interesting. You, you also have potentially some of the other wise men and elders talking down here about what might this be um, and what, what's going on. And of course, um, we, we know Daniel has the answer. Um, you also get a sense, uh, as you're going to see in the other pictures as well, of dread that a lot of other people have uh, in, in this painting. So anyway, I, I just thought this was an interesting view um, and um, something that captures the image. Now, here, it's a very different shot, right? Um, number one, um, something very important that's absent from this picture is um, you don't, you don't, you, you don't have um, Daniel in this picture. Um, at least as far as we could tell, they don't have Daniel. Um, you do have the king um, who seems to be um, in, a, in the middle of a banquet, um, but a little, um, uh, I don't know what the right term that I'm looking for is, but um, potentially um, goofy, um, not necessarily, he doesn't look like a pillar of strength, um, that, that, that's for sure. Um, and you see the people around him are, um, you know, also each one a little bit interesting. Um, and, uh, but you do in this picture have- He looks, he looks scared. Yes, oh, you in this one, you look scared as opposed to the previous one, if you noticed, um, they don't look scared. The king, does, assuming that's the king, all the way down on the bottom, who, he doesn't look scared. You know, he's, he's sitting, he's watching and so on. So he doesn't look too scared. Um, here, the king is having that very bewildered, scared reaction. Um, so, you know, I, again, I, 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 but and also you see the way that the writing is, is mene, it's, it's uh, down, mene, mene, tekel ufar sin. Um, so, so you see the writing in Hebrew letters, um, which, you know, probably not how it would have been done, but, but, um, but maybe because no one could read it. Um, so that's something that's, that's into, that's thrown into the Rembrandt painting. Um, you also get a better sense of at least the Beth HaMikdash's utensils being used for drinking, um, here and potentially eating here. Um, so I thought that was interesting as well. You know, I'm not really sure what to make of this, this one um, and what it teaches us or not. Um, it, it doesn't have the richness of the other, um, but it does have the writing on the wall and Daniel trying to interpret it. The writing is written in a, in a direction that we could actually read it um, as opposed to the other, which you had to get creative in your reading of it. Um, and um, assuming this is Daniel interpreting it, one of the things that I think stands out is his, you know, his seems like he's a, a, a strong, bold person and that he's, um, at least the way it's presented, taller and, um, you know, just stands out from the others. So I, that was something that I noticed here. Um, and finally, this one is kind of a, a cross between them all, um, you know, where you see Daniel, this is a lot like the first one. It's a much bigger room. The writing is way up on the wall. Um, there's a light you can't tell where the light's coming from. It looks like the light is coming from the, 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 the letters that are on there, which is written, interestingly enough, backwards and upside down. And so it, it, it doesn't, you know, that's interesting. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 it's hard to tell, at least in the, oh, who the king is. I guess maybe the king is the one reclining, hard to say. Um, 
you know, I, I didn't spend a lot of time doing the reading the analyses of these um, images. But um, what I think is is pretty cool about all of it is um, seeing how someone uh, uh, envisions and 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 reads a pedic of Tanakh. Because at the end of the day, um, the artist is is uh, the, the the artist's imagination is captured by the story that we read, um, and then projects certain different things that that strike them as important. Um, and again, it might be the grandeur of the court or the excess of the court or the bewilderment of the of the king or the the hopelessness of the king. Um, so so um, you know I I, I, I kind of look at those paintings, you know you're gonna laugh at me as I say this, but they're kind of like reading Rashi, you know, like not, not exactly they don't have the, the divine inspiration that, that we attribute to Rashi, but at the same time, um, they are close readers of the text in some way or, or not so close readers of the text and they give a certain um, view of how they view the um, how they view what happened or what the, what the, what the Navi is trying to tell us what the, what the, what the, what the book of Daniel is trying to tell us um, and um, so so I think that that's um, something that's really significant um, and uh, you know I, I, the question is so what do we make of it right um, and and uh, I think, I think it's really, um, you know, I, I think there's a few points that have to be made from it. Uh, number one is um, a theme that we see in a lot of other places, which is um, the, the, the son who, who gets the power um, is not as wise as the, um, the father who gives it to him. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar heard what Daniel had to say, um, he, it impacted him. He raised Daniel up which it seems like Belshazzar did, but more than that, he took to heart the words that he that he gave him, and and the the you know what I'll call the um, the, the the message that Hashem is trying to give him, he took to heart and he he did things differently. Um, was he fantastic? He may not have been fantastic, but he he did enough to make Hashem say, okay, I'll, I'll let this guy stay in power. Um, whereas Belshazzar doesn't do any of the good and you know he doesn't climb to the top the way Nebuchadnezzar would have had to have done and uh, he has it all coming to him and worse he had you know it seems like the 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 the, the queen and Daniel and therefore the, Tan the Tanakh thinks hey your father already knew this so you should have known already to to respect Hashem and you didn't and therefore time's up you you have no merit of your own. It, it's time for you to go, and um, so I think that happens a lot. A, a not so different story to compare in the Tanakh is the the story of uh, Rechav Am, who was the son of Shilomo. Um, Shilomo is the king, and uh, Shilomo is maybe the greatest king, uh, you know, of 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 Judea. He rules the United Kingdom. He creates. The Bet HaMikdash, he creates peace treaties. People come from far and wide to see him, but he's not all perfect. Um, and then his son comes along and is given the opportunity to try and make things a little better. And rather than listen to the elder advisors, he takes the advice of the younger advisors, which is to put more pressure and to be more difficult than his father was on the people. And that's the advice he takes. And as a result, the kingdom splits and, and Jewish history is never the same. So, so actually, um, a very similar sense, you know, um, story in that sense, in that the young king doesn't learn the lesson uh, of the old king, who gets the mistakes made, but um, the king Hashem forgives him a little bit, gives him a little time, and hopefully the children will learn. And in both instances, the children don't learn. Anyway, I think one of the other things that is here that's not only about the Babylonians. I think it's intended to be a book of the Tanakh, which is a, a message of the Tanakh, which is Hashem in the way that he operates will give the keys to the to, to the to the to the car. We'll give the, we'll give the keys to the kingdom to not necessarily the best characters, um, and they have to do what we'll call God's work, whatever it may be, and uh, it's not always clean. And Hashem give, empowers them. But it seems like Hashem expects a certain degree of, of understanding of, 
where that power comes from. And if that's abused, it won't be long before so we give the keys to somebody else. Um, and and um, that seems to be the, the idea that the Tanakh is giving across here is the Babylonians didn't get that. And I think one of the things that's interesting is who takes over for them, the Persians. We know the Persians are really good about letting the, uh, the, the Jews return to, 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 to Jerusalem, to Judea, and to rebuild the Beit HaMikdash. And why do they do that? It could be because they have an appreciation of this. And you could say maybe that has to do with Mordechai and Esther, or as we're going to see, Daniel has a, has a relationship with them. But they get it. Um, and, and that seems to be um, a message that the Tanakh says, to the extent that a government gets Hashem's role in things, um, that government has a better chance of succeeding. So perhaps we could say the same thing about some other um, kingdoms and, and, and superpowers that have existed in the world. You know, perhaps America, you know, outlasted the Soviet Union. Perhaps England um, was, was, was a world power, right, as was France and Spain, because they had some sense, uh, maybe not the ideal way, maybe not perfect, and maybe that's why it doesn't last, but they had some sense that they were empowered by God. Um, and even if, it, even if they didn't fully do it the right way and didn't fully understand what that meant and, and how it should manifest itself, some credit and some, some longevity is given to them as a result. So, so perhaps America, which is, um, even if it has a strong separation of church and state, still claims to be built, and, and I think is built on Judeo-Christian values and God is a major influencing force in the way our country one, runs. So perhaps um, some aspect of the of the of the of the prophecy has been and, and the, the 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 messaging of the Book of Daniel has been taken to heart here. Uh, not exactly, but um, maybe somewhat, and uh, perhaps that's a message as well. Anyway, I'm going to stop here for today. Um, next week we're going to talk about. Uh, Danielle in the lion's den and uh, what we make of that. And I hope we'll be able to have one more class after that. Um, and then I'm going to have to break for the, uh, for the season. So um, have a great day, everyone. And um, if you need the recording, let me know. I'll send it as soon as it finishes processing. Take care. Have a great day.